All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started, guys. I'm super excited to um, be back in person and see everyone in person. Um, welcome to Open Source Summit. Um, and I look forward to speaking with you all about CNCF and how CNCF is enabling end user driven open source. So I'm Devana Lee. And today we'll review introductions a little bit about me, and then we'll discuss what CNCF end user community is, how CNCF enables end users to engage in the ecosystem, and how your organization can get involved. So again, my name is Devana, and my role is to help grow our ecosystem community of end users and vendor members. These organizations help fund and support the critical services we provide our uh, projects, excuse me, to grow and shape the cloud native ecosystem. I work closely with um, the CNCF staff to help anyone wanting to participate in our communities get engaged where they see fit. I have a background in sales um, from Dell EMC and VMware. I've been in the cloud and cloud native um, space for eight years and five months with CNCF. And of course, it all fall, if it all fails, like the fun fact says out there about me, I'll just you know break out my knock knock jokes from my journal from childhood and I'll just take it on the road and hopefully I can be like the new Chelsea Handler or Dave Chappelle. <laughs> I look forward uh, to working with all of you and also sharing more on CNCF today. All right, so let's jump in and talk what the CNCF community is. CNCF defines the end users as organizations that use cloud native projects and technologies internally, but do not sell cloud native services, products, or solutions externally. This excludes vendors, consultancies, training partners, et cetera, as well as end users or organizations like Spotify, Peloton, Nordstrom, JP Morgan, just to name a few businesses that are outside of IT, but rely on IT and, um, and cloud native projects to power their organizations. You'll see here on our um, governing board, this is how we have structure our foundation. So starting with our governing board, um, our governing board is being primarily made up of our platinum members and other elected roles um, on the left. And the marketing committee also lives here as part of our uh, membership as well. The governing board is primarily responsible for the CNCF strategy, budget, and marketing. And the technology oversight committee in the middle as you can see, is elected from the community and is independent from membership or the board. This group decides which projects to host at CNCF. They also hold um, technical advisory groups, which are more specialized areas of technology focus run by the community for CNCF. And then, of course, our end user community. So. The EUC really makes what uh, is what makes CNCF unique as their role is to provide requirements and feedback to CNCF and our projects and keep the wheel of innovation spinning. And today we have over 150 organizations participating with more joining every day. In the following slides, I'll go ahead and share how organizations are participating and how CNCF are enabling end users to engage in the ecosystem. So how does CNCF enable end users to engage in the ecosystem? And how exactly are end users engaging in the ecosystem and why are organizations participating? Our goal as a foundation is to help end users better navigate the cloud native ecosystem, recruit talent, and ultimately adopt cloud native successfully. One of the ways that we help end users navigate the ecosystem is by facilitating opportunities for end users to connect with peers across industries and other practitioners. Companies need to understand how to navigate cloud native and open source. All organizations and practitioners want to find peers with similar challenges to collaborate on best practices, 
meet project maintainers, and ultimately make the best decisions so they can support their goals and cloud native architectures. Our developers experience call is open to all end users in the community and regions in topics from deeply technical to presentations from other users. Our service mesh group, um, if you can see here, that's actually been um, something that was a specialized group um, that was requested, a requested call based on this technology. And we also have telecom user group, financial services group, and a research group, which are all open for all to attend. Year is not just limited to members. Another way we help um, end users navigate the ecosystem is by sharing their use of the cloud native technologies via our CNCF technology radar. This tech radar is meant to help those also assessing particular technologies choose what's best for them and also get involved where they see fit. Each quarter, a select um, group of volunteers gather and assess a particular topic, and these results are then published via the technology radar. These radars are not limited to CNCF projects. They do showcase um, technologies across the ecosystem based upon our EUC members' submitted information. And because we're connecting virtually and again now um, in real life, there are so many ways that we can learn from each other. And we felt like it was really important to give access to our flagship event, KubeCon events, to all of our end users. And as you can see, with different levels of membership comes with different levels of access. And we really hope to see you guys there at KubeCon this year. It's in two weeks. <laughs> Another area where CNCF is helping more end users contribute back to the ecosystem and getting engaged is by enabling others to recruit engineering talent. We support our end users by enabling them to share their cloud native journey or story with the ecosystem. This exposure is important in helping recruiting talent as engineers are attracted by open source, modern tooling, and interesting challenges. Here, we also provide technical marketing um, opportunities via our case study programs, ability to submit technical blogs to be shared broadly, and our online programs like live webinars and live streams. Additionally, our end users can sponsor a dedicated recruiting booth at our KubeCon event for a significant discount. And then we'll also invite those willing to speak publicly about their uh, use of CNCF projects to private media and analyst projects for further outreach. Lastly, because we want to share more end user stories, we provide our EUC members with assistance for their call for purpose submissions for KubeCon as well. In addition to recruitment, <clears throat> Our retaining our talent is also really important. So training is included um, to help our end users maintain certifications for their teams. And lastly, we want to help end users be good open source citizens. So we align to help them grow their open source leadership and presence. In combination with um, the Linux Foundation, we offer opportunities for organizations to get executive leadership and legal involved in open source. Through CNCF, we offer quarterly executive agreements with uh, CNCF staff, engagements, excuse me, with CNCF staff, as well as um, opportunities to participate on our governing board. And through the Linux Foundation, we offer open source uh, program office assistance via the to-do group. And then the ability to attend our member-only legal summit and open source leadership summit as well. So how does your organization get involved? Um, CNCF offers memberships to those organizations wanting more formal engagement with CNCF and the ecosystem. So we offer um, different levels based on your goals ranging from supporter, which is those just wanting to get started with the ecosystem, all the way to platinum, which is the highest level of participation. I won't go so far deep into this chart, 
Um, but you can visit our uh, website at cncf.o um, backslash end user or find me after this and we can discuss like which level is best for your organization depending on where you are in your cloud native um, open source journey. And if you're not ready to engage formally as a member, we do encourage individuals to jump into our CNCF tags. These are open to anyone and everyone to participate. And as you can see, we have a wide range of technology sectors to choose from based on your own um, goals. So um, the next step after the tags, if you are interested, which would be to visit our GitHub page to join calls, mailing lists, and just jump right on in. Of course, you know, starting to contribute to a CNCF um, project, this is an additional place to, be, um, to begin. So you can check out our CNCF um, contributor guide to learn how to get started. And then you can also send teams to QCon, um, Cloud Native Con, to engage directly with project maintainers um, and other Cloud Native technical um, leaders. The whole goal is to make it easier for end users to start contributing where they feel um, they have the most impact and learn from one another. As you can see, Elena, Dave, and Kevin greatly um, value engaging with CNCF and the community to make a difference in their companies and the ecosystem at large. And to learn more about becoming a member and where to engage in CNCF, feel free to reach out to me or um, visit me at our booth inside. And I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks. We have any questions? Yes, yes, so absolutely. So um, the question is to talk a little bit about the incubation process. So <clears throat> we have um, different levels of um, our, our projects. So it starts at incubating and then we go into a graduated uh, project. So just to get a little bit more clarity, are you curious on how you even get to the actual incubation process? Sure, sure. So the first thing that you would have to do is get involved um, with CNCF and of course we will get you involved in the ecosystem and then talk about like um, the project. A lot of times we've seen um, different people come in for um, different trainings, um, for example, or if they're already using cloud native technologies how they're using them, and then we'll, um, we're open to getting you involved in the ecosystem, actually helping you kind of get that incubate, incubated project up and going, and then introducing you to other people that have already had um, actual graduated projects and stuff like that. But for it to get to our graduated uh, project, of course, we um, again, that's why we have um, the governing board, and um, those that will actually get it to the actual graduating project. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. And, and one more then, are there requirements around what, uh, which companies or what kind of companies or projects can be incubated? Sure. So um, the question is, is there a requirement on which companies um, can have incubated projects? Um, again, with, with um, joining the ecosystem we have as long as if it's an end user that you guys are um, having projects and you are um, putting projects into the ecosystem as long as you guys aren't um, consultancies or um, training partners or etc then you guys can definitely be a part of the ecosystem as far as the end user ecosystem um, from a vendor standpoint, like if you're reselling, um, if you're actually selling, then that would not qualify. 
So, no, we're open um, to all end users for sure. No problem. Any other questions? So um, the different um, the question is who's um, who's the persona of an end user, yeah, technically? Yeah, absolutely. So as far as our end users go, um, like earlier mentioned, there are um, different technology groups. Or they can be technology groups or non-technology groups. So that can span from a Nordstrom, like I mentioned earlier, or a Peloton, um, or any group that is actually using cloud native technologies and not actually selling cloud native uh, technologies. So, um, and not, like I said earlier to your point, also not a consultancy as well. So, um, hold on, actually, let me, I can't actually go back. So, like I said, vendors, consultancies, training partners, and then uh, telecos. So, End user organizations literally span from any any businesses, whether they are in IT or not in IT, that rely on IT and cloud native technologies to like power their organizations for sure. So that would be considered an end user. Any other questions? Good. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for your time. Of course, find me if you need anything.